and it was just her vitality and the way you could apply the acrylic and I thought oh ah as an artist you have to keep growing I have got to try and work quite hard at it emotionally <laughs> Hi, I'm Claire, founder of Open Stage Arts, Drama and Singing Classes for Adults. Lots of the adults who come to our classes and online events are looking for a creativity that has been put on the back burner during their sensible grown-up years. I have found this to be true among other creatives too, so I've decided to find out more about the painters, photographers, writers, printmakers, actors, crafters, teachers and more who have found or re-found their creativity later in life. This time I'm speaking with acrylic artist Karen Joy, who I have known for a number of years and whose paintings I have a few of myself. I asked Karen to tell me about her art and what it is she does. Yes, hello Claire. I'm an impressionistic landscape acrylic painter basically um, now that's not where I started from um, but yes it my work is has to be about the landscape I am trying to work more and more impressionistic expressionistic abstract okay landscape because I I just feel as an artist you have to keep growing and I'm not sure I might revert back. Yeah. But at the moment, I'm trying to explore, thanks to lockdown, more. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Now, I know that you went to art college, but not as a painter. What did you study? Well, I did go as a... I went to do a fine art degree, a fine art degree, and uh, when I got there, the amount of experience I'd had at art was very very minimal how I got in I have kind of not really any idea I mean I took my portfolio and I was a, a mature student at 22 three and I got there and then it was in the sort of early 70s and everybody was doing big abstract that was quite new and I thought uh -huh. I don't really know kind of so I landed up doing printmaking really because I could in I could incorporate the printmaking process. I, I I I did that and I did all the different. I did the silk screen, the lithograph, etching. I loved the I loved I did photographic etching and then did some. I can remember one particular piece all that was years ago, um, of of doing a photographic etching of our view still back at the farm, and then doing my abstract version on top of it. Yeah. Which actually, if I had the opportunity, I'd quite like to do now, uh -huh. in uh -huh. fact, thinking about it. Um, <laughs> but I, I, again, didn't really know. I think the emo I'd do so much better at college now. Right. Now I'm more mature. No, I'm no... I, I've got more to say. Yeah. I, I know myself better. What happened when you'd finished your studies then? Well, I had met my to-be husband who was just horsey and so I went back to doing the picture restoration which I had done before I went to art college right and I managed to get some galleries who sent me work at home and so for all the time and then that my boys were growing up I was either mucking out stables <laughs> or restoring paintings right and making a bit more money yeah there was no way a I could have afforded to have painted for myself nor was I in the right space place in my mind as as well as well yeah. in my mind really it just didn't enter until my boys grew up then something started niggling yeah um and I thought actually I then thought oh I would quite like to learn watercolor Okay. Like all us middle-aged ladies <laughs> do. Yeah. And I went, luckily, to an amazing teacher. Met 
a few other ladies of similar age, or a bit older actually, and there was a couple of us, and we got really quite into the art bit. And then I, I, I was doing watercolour, and I've always been a bit of a bull in the china shop with my painting, and you can't really with watercolour, the technique. It's all about technique, and you have to kind of know where you're going, and I don't want to. And I went to an acrylic workshop with an amazing artist called Suzanne Gray, who was, well, you can't do this, but she was so energetic and so enthusiastic, and she leapt backwards and forwards, and she produced this wondrous piece of art in about half an hour, well, an hour or so, but, and it was just her vitality and the way you could apply the acrylic. And I thought, oh, ah, e did one I've still got the piece I did and I was really quite pleased with it I've played with that round with it over the years but I just knew that was absolutely for me yeah it was the freedom the excitement the the kind of oh god that's wrong let's plonk something else on top of it but a little bit of that comes from underneath you it's so people say acrylic dries too quickly you can't do it it's too bright the colours and I love the fact that it dries quickly because I can just keep working and putting yeah. layer upon layer. Whereas with oil, you have to stop and wait for it to dry for a day or two, by which time I've, I'm a different person when I go back there. But a lot of people also, they look at my work and they go, it's oils. Yes. I mean, you, you would say, think so. You I think would so. think so you, yes. initially, yeah. A lot of people, they go, really? Brilliant. So I, if you like, I get the best of both worlds. Yeah. Um, I just think it's... I love the dynamic instantness. Thinking about your landscapes, and we'll get on to pastures new later, how did you develop that painting style and did it come naturally? It did develop naturally, really. I looked at other artists I liked. I mean, that one workshop I went to and I really was, and I did actually go to, there was another workshop with um, Ali Cochrane. And again, just a few techniques of what you could do. And basically it showed me is that there was nothing you couldn't. There were so many techniques that you can do. And I think maybe my work gets too fussy because of that sometimes. Um, but I just sort of kept working and I knew it was about the layering. I knew it was about the landscape. And sometimes, as you know, it's more realistic than, than others. But yes, it just sort of grew. And I, I mean, I've only been painting seriously. Well, I suppose it's quite seriously now for about 10 years, I suppose. And you kind of go in fits and starts. It sounds terribly dramatic. <laughs> but it's more and more about the soul, about the heart. I kind of, if you like, I think I can do nice landscapes. Although some, one you, it's probably one of the, my best paintings. Oh, one I've got. Yes. <laughs> I have to say, I think it is one, the, the that big one, I think for me, it is still one of the better paint. I'd love to yeah. see it again, to see how I've moved on. But when you couldn't debate the between you which one yes. you were having, and you just got so just got the right one. Ah, in go. my mind, it, 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 <laughs> what it had, yeah, you know, and that's what it's got to be about. It's got to be, I suppose, yes, because people say you know it's about your feeling of the landscape. Hmm. I, I've sort of known where I've wanted to, to go, I suppose, without knowing that I wanted to go, <laughs> in a way. I asked Karen about her experiments with abstract painting and what her impetus was to try something new. Well, I went during to lockdown, two things, all exhibitions I was supposed to be doing, Bucks Open Studios and Oxford Open Studios. Of course, they went virtually, but oh, it wasn't my thing. But I decided there and then, and also Brill on the Hill, everything was cancelled from March. So I, you, you didn't know how long it was going to go on for, but I decided, great, that was my time. I didn't have to prepare for exhibitions. I didn't have the stress of having to prepare 
make nice paintings for exhibitions. I was going to go on the journey I want to go on. I found this online course and it was great fun. And that's what it was called, the joy of painting. And I have the joy of painting and I'd had that. So I wasn't stuck, but I wanted to be allowed to move on, um, to, to, to push, to go further. And I went a lot more abstract and did a lot of mark making, which is what we were supposed to do. Great fun. And I thought, ooh, to some of it. But I actually, looking back at some of the earlier stuff, actually now, I'm thinking, no, I did actually learn. Right. But again, that was doing abstract marks. Right at the end, it was learning about composition and tonal, which things I know about. If I do a painting of a scene and a tree stuck in the wrong place, I don't paint it. Yeah. Because compositionally, it doesn't work. Now, I feel that. I don't work it out. Yeah. And my painting is all instinct. It has always been about feel. And the abstract, to me, you... It, it's, it's, it's about design. And I don't want my work to be about design. Yeah. If that, maybe I've got it wrong, but that's how I see it being terribly dramatic here but I do want it to I want people to stand there and just go oh not oh, well that's nice oh, yeah I like that kind of it's got to be more about it than just the painting yes I don't think I yeah. can live long enough and I, <laughs> I, I I kind of don't quite know quite how to do it yet sure but I have done four pieces which I am so excited about. Brilliant. Because, and they came out of playing, and I did just play, and there's no direct landscape. There's a mix of all the landscapes I know, I suppose. But you can sort of see their landscape, but that's about it. Wow. I'm just so excited about them. And... I haven't quite been able to do it again since, quite, but I did one this morning that I have done about four paintings on this piece of board and they were all kind of getting up nice and realistic and, and no! <laughs> <laughs> so I put the photographs away. Yeah. It's, can't do it from a photograph. It's got to come from the mind. Awesome. <sighs> well, it's sort of... I find that hard work. Yeah. But there's, what's the point if it's not hard work I have got to try and work quite hard at it emotionally <laughs> <laughs> but I feel I can probably do what I want to do technically now right I think I know how to manipulate the paint there are so many different ways you can do it I mean it's great fun and so many which I've learnt more this this uh, course, but there's it's just you can use this, that, and the other, and yeah. it's wonderful. And I'm a bit inclined to try all of it on one painting, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of, which is the, my problem. I think it just gets too busy. But. Okay, I wouldn't like to be in that position. <laughs> well, out of control. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's learning something new, not a technique, but a, no. a feeling, it's a feeling, and knowing when to stop. And being able and, and, and painting a feeling is I think very you know, some people can do it easier, but I'm finding that what does that mean? A land by feeling of the landscape, but it yeah. Well um, it's not there to be described, is it? No. In words. That's, that's, that's why you paint, 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 isn't it? it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's You've mentioned about exhibiting and selling your work. Has that helped boost your confidence? Yes, it has to, obviously. If somebody gets you and they want to take a piece of you home, it is the most wondrous feeling. It really, really... I mean, I'm getting choked up about it now. It's... What is interesting is when I do exhibitions, and there's usually I've got two or three pieces that I know... They're the one I like. They're the ones I like. They're the, and nine times out of ten, they're the ones that sell first or that sell. Yeah. So 
which has told me something stopped producing quite so much. Ah. Just put what you know is right. I've learned that this last few weeks. But yes, it boosts your confidence tremendously, but but it's difficult. Well, I can sell them if they're like this. Do I paint what I know I can sell? Right. But then if you paint, as I've discovered, what you think you know you can sell, but your heart is no longer in it. I don't know. I don't know whether they don't look as good or whether I don't think they look as good. Yeah. Um, and again, this lady who's um, I've been doing the the course with, she was the same. She started off very very representational, and people liked her work. And she's now gone on very abstract landscape, but very abstract. And she's saying you will leave an awful lot of people behind you. But you will find people that do like yes. your work. And it's, and as she said, it's not, it's, I mean, I'm lucky I don't have to make a living from it. And the idea, it's about painting, it's about finding your joy, it's not about selling. I don't want to be a commercial artist, yeah. I suppose is what it's saying. I don't want to just churn out paintings, because some people just paint the same for years, because they can sell it. Yes, yeah, so you're not painting it to sell it. No. You're painting it. I'm painting it, and, and which is why, if somebody wants one, it's you know, it's oh wow, they get me, mm-hmm. and it's it's um, yeah, it's very it's very exciting, and it's yeah, it does help. But as I say, I don't want to get stuck in a rut because yes. of it. Yeah. and having now these exhibitions coming up. I'm trying to do put both in. Okay, yes. Which, whether it'll confuse people. And I don't know if that's the right thing to do. No, but you'll find out. Well, yes, but um, but it's nice to be asked to exhibit. Yeah. So that was, you know, another, another little pat on my back to actually being sort of approached. I say, exhibit it, galleries are closing down, obviously. It's getting more and more difficult, which is why it goes online, which, I mean, I love to be there. That's why I like the open Mm. studios, because I like to talk to people about my work. And I think people like to talk to you about your... Yeah, definitely. And I think that's why the open studios are great, because you get people that are actually interested in art. They're not actually coming necessarily to buy something to hang on, to fill that space. They see something and they think, I've got to have that. In light of 2020's changes and upheavals, I was keen to know about Karen's plans for the future. There is a gallery I want to approach, and I have now for about three or four years saying, yep, I will, yep. And Derek keeps saying, go on, Emma. And with this new move, I'm not ready, I can't paint a consistently for a gallery just at the moment of a style because they will want I think they will want a style um I need to put my work online I suppose which doesn't fill you with joy well it doesn't (laughs) fill me with joy as you know either the actual putting it online taking all the photographs and doing you know all that what a waste of time I could be painting yeah it's exactly how I feel it. I find so frustrating. And as I say, I don't think I, 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 I don't think you're getting the real painting from a photograph. I either just keep painting and producing more and more and more and more and what am I gonna do with them? Yeah. Or you have to go with the flow of I suppose. You know, going online. I mean this friend, you know, she says she does totally, totally different to me. But she sells quite a lot online. But I can imagine hers are much more two-dimensional. Yes. Yeah. I think... And a lot of... You know, I mean, I see people on... In, um, in, uh, Instagram. Instagram. That I love and mm. I follow. But I feel also partly because I am a painter, I kind of probably know a bit more what it looks like. Mm. A little bit. And some of the stuff I really like is also very two-dimensional, very abstract, and I think it's wonderful, uh, a couple of people's work. But I could never work like that because it is about 
craft composition it is it's a different way of working with paint. Yeah, so some pieces and some methods of working come across better. Mm, I think so. Online. I think Your stuff so. is very textural. Yes. I've either going to have to do it or not do it. And that's, you know, really. And get brave or hmm. not. Um, but I'm just using the excuse that I'm still on my journey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's perfect excuse. <laughs> There are many, many podcasts out there. It's difficult to know where to start. So for each episode, I ask my guests for their recommendations. You're welcome. I don't delve myself to find people. There are two I listen to occasionally. One is um, Ask an Artist, which is Peter Keegan, um, who is mainly a portrait artist and landscape, and Laura Boswell, who's a printmaker, who's... um, does beautiful Chinese wood cuts. Um, and they're very generous with, and they speak about their experience. Um, and it's really about whether you want to be a professional, you know, how to go about being an art. They, they talk about all sorts of different things, but um, they're not too long. Mm-hmm. Um, and knowing, especially knowing Peter, I know he's a very, very generous man. Um, and the other one is this uh, um, Louise Fletcher and Alice Sheridan, which is, and theirs is Art Juice. Um, and they talk about all, all sorts of things also. Sometimes I find they go on a bit long for me. <laughs> um, but I don't, I, I'm not a great, I'd rather listen to music while I'm mm. painting. And through this course, I have picked up a few people like Lewis Noble, and he does um, put, uh, does quite a lot on YouTube, sort of videos and things. I suppose I'm bad at learning. <laughs> <laughs> Lazy? Yeah. Mm, maybe. Um, I also... I don't actually want anybody to interfere with my art at the moment Mm -hmm. yeah I I, I don't want you know I've gone on a few courses over the last few years and come back devastated and not wanting to pick up a paintbrush again yeah and knocking my confidence for six I understand and I kind of just think I need to make this journey myself yeah I'm finding all sorts of things I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's like having a therapy cancer. session. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yes. Can you come again next week? Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Here's what you need to know if you'd like to connect with Karen and her art. Well, ideally, I would like them to email me. Okay. Um, actually, um, and they can always come to the, the studio. Um, but I put a certain amount on Facebook and Instagram. I haven't lately because of this transition. I'm wanting to sort out a little bit what I, but I have put a bit on on my Facebook page, and I have just done a Facebook page, Karen Joy Artist, purely for the art, so they don't have to scroll through all my grandchildren. Etc. Yes, but I also do have a website. Karen Joy Art. Dot Weebly. Dot com. I have a website, yeah. but I'm not really doing it properly. So I know, but you would you would have initially have had yes. a season of Brill and Art Weeks and yes, exactly all, like, all the other stuff where everyone and can normally see you. I have to say, I normally I sell reasonably well mm. at these live shows, so I haven't felt I've needed a website. Mm. Because although I've got plenty of paintings, there are usually places to hang them and yeah. show them. Yes, mm. yes. So you know, I've got. I'm going to have to move with the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fabulous, Karen. Thank you very much for talking to me. 
It's a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you very much for my therapy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How much editing you're <laughs> Creativity Found is an Open Stage Arts production. If you'd like to help fund future editions, you can buy us a coffee. That's K-O hyphen F-I, the online platform that helps creators receive financial support from fans of their work. Visit ko ficom slash openstagearts. If you have found your creativity as an adult and would like to talk to me for future podcasts, drop me a line at claire, C-L-A-I-R-E, at openstagearts.co.uk. On Instagram or Facebook, follow at Creativity Found Podcast, where you'll find photos of our contributors' artworks and be kept abreast of all that we're getting up to.